Hi, I'm Jennifer Cervelli, and I'm here to offer you a blend of digestible neuroscience and practical tools as they relate to your mind-body connection. What is the mind-body connection, and how does it impact wellness? If you have a few minutes, I'll explain the key features of what neuroscientists have coined our eighth sense, interoception. Interoception is the inner sense of your body. And this includes sensations like hunger and tiredness, and it also relates to emotion awareness and regulation. In my book for kids, to illustrate this concept, I used a quote I've heard many times from people of all ages. I had no idea how much I can actually feel my feelings in my body. Here's an image I often share in trainings with educators that demonstrates emotional awareness in one's body. The warm colors are where people reported a sense of activity, and the cooler colors show a lack of feeling. Now, I have a question for you. Can you point to your brain? Did you point to your head? Scientists and researchers have actually discovered that we have brain cells called neurons throughout our entire bodies. For example, researchers in neurocardiology refer to our hearts as heart brains. They have an estimated 40,000 neurons. Additionally, scientists have located what they call the second brain, located in the gut. This second brain features a whopping 100 million neurons. Interoception relates to a vast range of subjects. We've already talked about emotion and emotion regulation. And you might also notice others on here like anxiety disorders, decision making, and empathy. Are any of these on your list to improve for yourself? When I look at this with my educator hat on, there's a lot on here that we could better equip our kids and teens with. Let's talk about how interoception might help. Our sense of our embodied self offers us a vast amount of information that could be called intuition. This self-knowing informs more of your thought processes and decision-making than you might realize. For example, if you feel tension in your gut, regardless of what that root cause might be, that signal is sending an alert cue to the survival areas of your brain, making it more challenging for you to focus and think clearly in work tasks or relationships with people you care about. Have you ever seen the t-shirt phrase, forgive me for what I said when I was hungry? It's kind of like that. Early childhood educators know this well. If there's discomfort in a child's body, they are more likely to behave in ways that are challenging and disruptive in the classroom. For some people, this is all completely new and mind-blowing information. For others, this basic equation of hunger equals brain not working well might seem easy enough to grasp. The key as I see it, especially working with organizations that serve kids or the parents that I meet with in my office, is the emotional context. If you'd like, you can join me for a guided practice for interoceptive awareness. You might start by noticing how you're sitting in your chair and just noticing whether that seat you're in allows you to focus in on your internal sense of self. Now, sometimes letting your eyes be soft or allowing them to close all the way if you're comfortable might be helpful. Making any small adjustments you might find helpful here. And when you're ready, perhaps bringing your awareness to that second brain in your gut. 100 million neurons here, just waiting for you to give them your attention and discover the signals they're sending. In order to do that, you might put your hands on your belly. And noticing any sense of temperature you might be experiencing here. Maybe heat, warmth, or coolness. And then once you've checked for temperature, perhaps noticing any sense of movement or stillness. Is there tension, butterflies, churning, or a sense of fullness? Not really worrying about whether you can sense something here. And when you're ready, if you'd like, maybe shifting your attention to your heart. 
perhaps bringing your hands to your heart, as I have. Breathing and noticing sensations in your heart. Perhaps becoming aware of a sense of temperature. And then shifting to notice whether there are other sensations of movement or stillness here. The idea behind this practice is you are opening a pathway for connection. The basic principle of neuroplasticity, or our ability to change the patterns in our brain, is repetition. Repeating this practice of open awareness in your body to wire up a stronger pathway in your brain. If you had your eyes soft or close, you might begin to allow some more light in and open them. Maybe taking a moment now to notice any effects you might be experiencing from that short guided practice. You might jot down some notes of the pieces you found most helpful and brainstorm ways you might implement a practice like this on a more regular basis in your life for a more helpful and a more healthy mind-body connection. <laughs>